Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. I'm Naomi Kikon. The Bharatiya Janata Party will retain Gujarat for a seventh consecutive term and will win an unprecedented second term in Himachal Pradesh, according to exit ball data released on Monday evening. The Congress must settle for a distant second in both elections and Arvind Kejriwal's Amadmi Party expected to pose a serious challenge to the ruling BJP in the two states has flopped. Gujarat has 182 seats and the majority mark is set at 92. There are 68 seats in Himachal and the majority mark is 35, while Delhi has 250 seats. For Gujarat, the Republic P mark survey has given the BJP between 128 and 148 seats to Congress between 30 and 42 and fewer than 10 seats to the AAP. The prime accused in the Dibrugar University wrecking case in which a student was critically injured after he jumped from the second floor of the hostel surrendered before the police on Monday. The accused surrendered at Lekabani police station in Tinsugia district early morning. Six arrests have been made so far. Four students were suspended for three years and 18 others were expelled. Three wardens of the hostel were also suspended for dereliction of duty. The victim reportedly suffered a vertebral fracture leading to serious nerve injury. Bringing laurels to the state, Temsudola Jamir, an alumna of Deaf Biblical Ministry and a member of the Deaf Baptist Church, has been conferred the prestigious national awards for empowerment of persons with disabilities in the stretched Divyankan hearing impaired female category. Jamir received the award from the President of India on 3rd December in Delhi on the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Temsudola Jamir worked as a teacher after completing her secondary education at DBM. Over the years, she has also participated in and won medals in several district, state and national level games and sports. She is a founding member of the Deaf Community of Nagaland, a registered society for the welfare of the deaf in Nagaland, and is also a member of the Bible Sign Language Translation Team Nagaland. At present, she is working as a resource teacher in Samagra Shiksha Government of Nagaland. Tribura Chief Minister Dr. Manik Saha on Monday inaugurated Tribura's first fire brigade training institute at Badarkat in the outskirts of Agardala city. Dr. Saha was flanked by the state's fire and emergency services Minister Ram Prasad Bol during the inaugural session. The institute will train people in the management of both natural and man-made disasters. Addressing the function, Dr. Saha said he was told by the Minister of Fire and, and Emergency Services that this is the first such institute of the North East. People from different parts of the North East region will get training here, he said. The minister also informed that he would try to rope in good faculty members for the institute. The training center is in the training school. विभागीय मंत्री महोदय रामप्रसाद बाबा माँ के बोल चिलें जेठा सुधु इखने 
সুতরাং নর্থ ইস্টের মধ্যে প্রথম ট্রেনিং স্কুল এটা তো এর জন্য নিশ্চয়ই এটাকে আমি সাধুবাদ দেব যে এই ধরনের উদ্যোগ এখানে নেওয়া হয়েছে শুধু আমাদের সিভিল ডিফেন্সের যারা ছেলে মেয়েরা তারাই শুধু ট্রেনিং নেবেন না বাইরের থেকেও শুধু আমাদের রাজ্যেরই নয় যখন এই বিষয়টা আরও আপ টু ডেট হবে ফ্যাকাল্টিও যদি ভালো হয় যারা ভালো করে আরও ট্রেনিং দিতে পারবে এবং আলাদা আলাদা বিষয় থাকবে ড্রাইভার থেকে আরম্ভ করে ফায়ারম্যান কিভাবে করবে আরও যাতা আপনাদের বিভিন্ন যে বিভাগীয় এক একজনের এক একটা দায়িত্ব থাকে তাদেরকে যে আমি বলবো যে স্পেশালিস্ট যারা ট্রেনিং দেবেন সেই যদি খবরটা মানুষের জানে অন্যান্য রাজ্যে তারাও কিন্তু এখানে পাঠাবে এই ট্রেনিং নেওয়ার জন্য আমরাও দেখব তাদের যদি বাইরের থেকে আসে ওদেরকেও ট্রেনিং দেওয়ার ব্যবস্থা করব এখানে যদি দেখা যায় বিল্ডিংয়ের জায়গা সংকলন হচ্ছে না তাহলে আর একটু বাড়িয়ে দেবো আমরা বাড়াবো এটাকে এবং আজকের দিনে আমরা বলতে পারি যেভাবে গাড়ি যেভাবে রাস্তার যে আগে রাস্তাঘাট ছিল একরকম এখন রাস্তাঘাটের এমন চওড়া এমন স্মুথ এত গাড়ি ঘুরা বেড়েছে যে প্রতিদিন রাস্তায় অ্যাক্সিডেন্ট হচ্ছে গাড়ি আগের চেয়ে অনেক অনেক গুণ মানুষের অ্যাক্সিডেন্ট থেকে শুরু করে বিভিন্ন রকমের অ্যাক্সিডেন্টে পড়তে হচ্ছে ফায়ার সার্ভিস সকলের আগে উপস্থিত থাকতে হয় এবং একমাত্র জনতা ফায়ার সার্ভিসের উপরই বর্ষা সর্বপ্রথম যাই হোক সেটা আমাদের সামাজিক ব্যবস্থার মাধ্যমে হোক প্রকৃতির মাধ্যমে হোক যে কোনো কাজ কারণে হোক যদি কোনো প্রকার অ্যাক্সিডেন্ট কোনো প্রকার যদি মানুষ মৃত্যুর সাথে বা কোনো মৃত্যুহানি ঘটনা ঘটে সকল সবাই আগে সবার আগে ফায়ার সার্ভিসে ফোন করে এবং ফায়ার সার্ভিস সর্বদা তা সে নিজেকে প্রস্তুত করে রাখে সর্বদা সে নিজে A US-based scientist who worked at China's Wuhan lab has claimed that COVID-19 was a man-made virus that leaked from the facility. According to a report by New York Post, the former Wuhan lab scientist Andrew Hoff's statement said that COVID was leaked from Wuhan Institute of Virology, a state-run research center two years ago. Epidemiologist Andrew Hoff, in, a, in his latest book, The Truth About Wuhan, claims that the pandemic was caused by the U.S. government's funding of coronaviruses in China, according to excerpts of the book published in the UK-based tabloid The Sun. The scientist has claimed that China's gain-of-function experiments were conducted with inadequate security, which resulted in leak at the Wuhan lab, reports said. This has not been the first time when China's Wuhan lab is at the center of controversy over the spread of coronavirus across the world in 2019. So far during the course of pandemic, many scientists researchers have claimed that COVID was indeed leaked from Wuhan. Former U.S. President Donald Trump used to call coronavirus as Chinese virus in his various press addresses when COVID was spreading fast. Union Minister of State for Food Processing Industries and Jal Shakti, Bralhad Singh Patel, visited the Zora Mega Food Park at Kamrang, Mami District. Later, the minister held a press conference during which he highlighted his dissatisfaction at the setup of the Zora Mega Food Park and INR 75 crore project. INR 45 crore is said to have been dispersed for its development. He also expressed a grievance that four preservation units developed at the Mega Food Park have not been utilized. Operational 
External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar signed an agreement on the Comprehensive Migration and Mobility Partnership with German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock in New Delhi on Monday. J. Shankar welcomed visiting German Foreign Minister who began her two-day India visit. The Great Hornbill Run was held today at the Indira Gandhi Stadium organized by Nakhland Athletics, funded by the Tourism Department. The Athletic Federation of India provided technical support. Speaking to Hornbill TV, the Joint Secretary of Nakhland Athletics, Ninguli Nakro, said the Great Hornbill Run was conceptualized to promote and create platforms for young athletics in the state and to promote sports and tourism. He asserted that the Great Hornbill Run is organized with international standards following every rule that is required. He said that there will be a national cross-country championship next year in the month of January where the Nagaland contingent will also be participating. A total of 60 participants took part in the Great Hornbill Run in various categories. Hi, welcome everyone. We are delighted that uh, you are joining us for the Great Hornbill Run. This run has got three categories and we are holding it uh, at this very nicely furnished Indira Gandhi Stadium in which we have held so many events over the past months. The Great Hornbill Run has been conceptualized to promote and create a platform for the young athletes of our state. Today we have three categories which is seniors, under 18 boys and girls, and under 16 boys and girls. We have kept good prize money to encourage young people to participate. And today we have about uh, 60 participants participating in all the categories. And we are very happy to inform that they have turned up and the race is on in full swing. This initiative is done by the Nagaland Athletics and we have technical guidance from the Athletic Federation of India. This race is being organized at uh, the national level standard and we are following every rule that is required and they will require when they compete at the Northeast and the National Games. The Great Hornbill Run has been conceptualized to promote the sport and also promote tourism. We have seen that tourists also come in for different aspects. And in this particular avenue also, we have seen that there are tourists who are sports lovers and some of them have come to witness the show this morning. So this is the Great Hornbill Run and uh, we have uh, technical officials who are taking care of the event, ensuring that the timings and the procedures are rightfully followed. So this year itself, Nagaland Athletics has been quite busy. We have organized the South Asian Cross Country Championships, which is the first international sport which has taken place in Nagaland. Also, simultaneously, we conducted the 56th Nationals also right here in the stadium of the cross country. And it was very well taken by the public and very, very well appreciated by the Athletic Federation of India on the conduct of the event and also the quality at which it was uh, executed. So now, after that, we have had the Nagaland Olympic Games where Nagaland Athletic participated and we came out with winning many medals. Simultaneously, we again went and competed in the national category. Although we could not win any medals, our young athletes became very emboldened and they got exposure at that national level and they got to know the rules and got to see the performances at the country level and they came back. Then we had the Northeast Olympic Games and in that, as you will already be aware, Nagaland Athletics brought in a lot of neighbor, uh, medals, almost about 40% of the total medal count. Nagaland has never performed so well in any one of the games. Now, what I would like to say and just maybe share is, the athletes now have a very different perspective. Earlier, they used to take a very casual approach and come and participate for the sake of participating or maybe just winning. But now, after having conducted all these major events, we are able to see the difference in the athletes themselves. Even though we don't prompt them, they themselves are already practicing day in and day out 
on a monthly, two monthly basis just to participate in a race. Our coaching camps remain, but their own initiatives are much more. And we have also seen that there's a lot of excitement created among the young people to come and participate in part of the athletics. Now, today we are only holding three races, but athletics has got short foot, javelin, high jump, long jump, and many more events. So we have seen that now athletics, uh, athletes and the young people are more serious. And they have also seen the opportunities that some of our people have been getting. They have also seen the difference in the mindset and the practice regime that uh, these young people are going through. So this is one very positive change that we are seeing in our people and we would like that to continue. Next year also we have a lot of events lined up starting right from participation. Uh, the first event for the year would be the, on the 8th of January we will have the National Cross Country uh, Championship. In senior men, L.R. Luther backed the prize, followed by first and second to runners-up, Wede Timero and Noching, respectively. In women's senior, the first prize was won by Viko Luhu, followed by runners-up Imsu Benla. In the under-18 boys category, A. Mariko won the top prize, followed by Kenny Ngoto and Heiyi Zibo, emerging first and second runners-up. In the under-18 girls category, Imti Sangla Kangshuo won the race, followed by Roslyn Vaipai and Kenny Senyo as the first and second runners-up winners. In the under-16 for boys and girls, Vepuzo Sakamo won the first position in the boys category and Krotsuo Tsuham the first position in the girls category. The first G20 Sherpa meeting under India's presidency began in the lake city of Uttepur in Rajasthan on Sunday evening. India's G20 Sherpa Amitabh Kant in presiding, is presiding of the four-day meeting. Delivering his opening remarks, Mr. Kant said India took over G20 presidency at a time when the world is facing several challenges. He said India believes every crisis is an opportunity. Representatives of the 19 countries, including from European Union and nine special invited countries, will take part in the meeting, setting the stage for important conver conversations on some of the most pressing, pressing issues of current time. Earlier in the day, holding an informal interaction with media, Mr. Kant said, India has taken over the presidency of G20 amid geopolitical crisis, rising global debt and when as many as 200 million have been driven into poverty while 100 million people losing their jobs globally due to COVID crisis and inflation. The Kerala Nationalist Congress Party State President P.C. Cheko, while speaking to media at Kannur, said his party will warmly accept Sashi Tharoor if he wanted to join the party. He said Tharoor was the only Congress leader capable of defeating the BGP. He also said Tharoor will remain the Thiruvananthapuram MB even if Congress reject him. Meanwhile, after meeting with P.C. Cheko, Congress leader Sashi Tharoor said he is not going to NCP and that much matters were not discussed with P.C. Cheko. That's all we have for now for more news. Keep watching Hornbill TV.